Hey. <clears throat> I watched the uh, Joe Rogan, Elon Musk interview, and there's a lot of interesting points in there. Uh, but the one I've been thinking about for a while is the uh, the bit about the cyborgs. It's like, when are we going to have uh, implants and the, the I.O. problem, really? Uh, because the problem with the I.O. is that, you know, your fingers don't type fast enough. You can't interface that fast with a computer. Uh, keyboard's just slow. So that's kind of why I, I like my keyboards to be faster. And I, I wind up being a very... Uh, a rather fast typer and picking up a lot of shortcuts and building macros and stuff like that I just want you know the keyboard is your uh, bottleneck really um, I know programmers talk about well it's thinking time not really typing time but I mean if you're thinking anyways then you're still typing I mean if I'm 50% this and 50% that and I improve that, it's still faster. I don't, I don't understand that argument. Anyways, uh, the idea that uh, we are cyborgs now because we use our cell phones. You know, you with a cell phone in your pocket are basically a cyborg because you have access to all of the internet and all of the things that that can reference. And that was an, an interesting idea that I kind of, uh, I kind of started getting into a few years ago because it was. Um, it was when I was talking about, and I have a video about this, uh, your brain processing extraneous information or information that's not really important. Your brain just kind of works on stuff all the time, not even stuff that you're really particularly interested in or even necessarily focused on at that point. Uh, it's like a background process that's just kind of churning away. Um, and that was the, the uh, what, what was it? I think it was called visual clutter the video I made, uh, but it talks about things in the background, your brain is still processing those things. And if you open up a, you know, basically uh, the, the mental equivalent of a browser tab and say, I'm going to come back to this later, your brain is still wasting some CPU cycles on that. So when you perform a task, uh, such as getting it out of your brain into a physical realm, uh, that can be writing a sticky note and people swear by this mechanic because it, it gets it out of their brains. Um, they write it down and now they don't have to think about it. They don't have to worry about it. Their brain is like, oh, I don't have to think about that thing anymore because I know that it's someplace where I'm going to be able to come back to it later. It's not going to bug me. Um, that's one of the things they talk about as far as memory is concerned for uh, waiters. Waiters or waitresses who deliver incomplete orders. They, they're able to remember the exact order that you provide them, you know, your table has, in perfect detail. And as soon as that table is delivered, as soon as that order is completed, then it's gone. You know, it, this is no longer a thing I have to keep track of anymore. So poof. Um, they found that when order in, an order is incomplete or an order is wrong, then it bugs them for the rest of the day if it's not corrected. Or, you know, it's delivered and it's not correct, but they didn't, uh, but the people are like, ah, don't worry about it, it doesn't matter. Well, uh, it's still in their brain because it's not resolved. It's ir ir irresolute? Uh, it, it's unresolved, either way. So, taking things and uh, writing down tasks or putting sticky notes on, uh, you know, the outside of binders or something like that to say, this is where this is going to be now. My brain doesn't have to worry about it. You're getting it out. Um... I found that being able to index things very well was a big helper. It was very helpful to me. Uh, I use an app. Uh, well, first of all, it probably started with photos because I started uh, once the camera, cell phone cameras, got good enough to take high quality pictures of text. I started storing information indefinitely in my pocket. Uh, you know, it's the what's the uh, uh, what's the SSID or yeah your SSID and your Wi-Fi password take a picture of it take a picture of it with my phone and now I will always have it period uh, if you have little bits of data uh, like account numbers or something like that or password hints things like that I used a tool called uh, orgsly which allows you to save pretty much any real textual data 
and then apply tags to it because my memory worked in a very uh, relational kind of way so I would have like I can remember a thing but I don't quite remember what I needed to remember about it like I know it's in there somewhere and I know it was related to this so whenever I would save that kind of data in orgsly I would uh, that's O R G Z L Y but whenever I would save that kind of data in orgsly I would apply tags uh, almost excessively to the point that I basically knew that whatever whatever point in the future in uh, you know next week or next year if I needed to find that data again I could get into orgsly and poke around for you know within three search attempts find the data that I'm looking for so I had this like complete relational not a relational database it's uh, it's like tagged information that I carried around in my pocket and since it's orgsly and it was all on uh, uh, shared through Dropbox I had it everywhere it's a plain text document so I can search it on my phone I can search it on my server with with Vim just using regular text searching or you know barring that I can open it up in a notepad and, and scroll around it if I need to but the data was there and now since the data was there it didn't have to be in my brain anymore um, the quote I heard a while ago I guess it doesn't probably doesn't apply to everyone but definitely applies to me uh, the brain is for processing not storage the brain is for processing not storage and my brain is so full of garbage and weird stuff it's just it's unreal and there's a, there are a few things in there that I want to remember that I can't and when those things come up I just pop them into orgsly you know this is a thing that I'm gonna have to look at later pop it into orgsly even uh, you know web pages or browser links uh, interesting websites or you know, I, I saw a video about a, uh, a charging circuit that's, you know, you can make yourself with a few parts. I'll, I'll pop that link into it somewhere and then just add a bunch of tags to it. And, you know, if I use it, I use it. If I never use it, forget it. You know, it doesn't matter. It's just sitting there taking up a few, uh, a few bytes of data. Well, a few more, but whatever. You know, it doesn't cost anything to store that data. And I've got it in multiple places and I've got it in my pocket all the time. So, freeing up your brain to be able to worry about those things. Oh, uh, the other thing is, uh, and I've mentioned this before, Cortana, as a message or as a reminder app, my brain is very, very bad at uh, just popping up non-relational reminders. If I'm thinking of a thing that reminds me, you know, within five layers of a thing I need to remember, then it suddenly pops to the front. And I'm like, oh gosh, I remember that. I need to, I need to remember that. I, I forgot about that. Um, but as far as time goes, no. My brain does not operate on regular time. Uh, and that's why, some, that's why this, uh, the watch has kind of helped me keep track of time. And, and that's why I primarily use the Pomodoro timer that I've got as a count up timer. Because I want to keep track of time because it gets away from me so easily because my brain just sinks into whatever I'm working on and it's so easy to lose an hour and that's that's a lot of time when you think about it uh, especially when focused effort can be made to turn that hour of working on one project into you know faster focused work that has a deliverable after 20 minutes and then you do that for another 20 minute block and then another 20 minute block you know, it's, it's just easy to get lost in time, for me at least, uh, and that's why I use uh, an app like Cortana, uh, because the voice recognition, and I think I mentioned this before, the voice recognition is really good, and it's very um, linguistic, uh, the, it, it has grammar, I guess is the way to put it, I can talk to it like a normal person, I can talk to it the way that I think which is, remind me, you know, hey Cortana, remind me of X in 30 minutes, in one day, next Thursday, uh, next Tuesday at 7 p.m. And that just pops up, and it'll always be a reminder. Uh, and it takes it very quick. So once that reminder goes through, it's out of my brain, I don't have to worry about it, I'm using the phone to supplement my brain. And I'm using the phone, uh, more particularly, to target my weaknesses, the things that I'm not good at, that I know I'm not good at. I'm targeting those things 
in ways that work. And the way that it works for me is a reminder that I do not get rid of until it's completed. So if I look at something and go, oh yeah, I'll do that real quick right now, I'm still gonna pause it for, you know, delay it for 15, snooze it for 15 minutes. Because if I don't, then I'll start doing it and then get distracted and then time gets away from me and that reminder is gone now forever because I already accepted it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you kind of have to mess around with different apps and different things and find out what works. But the place to start is to target your weaknesses. Um, and the way you target your weaknesses is by paying attention to yourself, working on yourself as a project for the, the recording I made earlier today. Uh, you work on yourself as a project and you start to figure out the things that you're not good at. Because, and you accept that. You accept this is a thing that I'm not good at. What do I do? If I could, I can't even count the amount of uh, organizational, like, uh, like, um, planner apps like I'm gonna plan that I do this at this time and I'm gonna do that at that time and don't don't forget to do this and don't forget to do that it none of it works none of it works uh, the, uh, as I said the, the thing that most works the most recent thing that I've been using and the thing that has worked the best so far is just a straight Cortana app and I will at some times at some points talk into Cortana for like five minutes of for uh, I've got like five things in my head and heaven help me if I don't get them out of my head fast enough because they will be gone. So I have to, you know, if there's too many things, I usually jot them down real quick and then I can go over them because I will forget the last, you know, the fifth thing as I go through the process of recording the first four. So whenever something pops into my head, I try to immediately get it out and into a thing that has a little bit more accountability and is better at keeping track of time and tasks than my brain is which surprisingly is pretty much anything or unsurprisingly I guess I don't know uh, but yeah I, I understand the concept and I appreciate the concept of uh, us basically uh, I don't it, it's not even supplementing I'm gonna call it augmenting I'm gonna say it I have been augmented augmenting our brains augmenting our attention with these tools um, and that's unbelievable. That's unbelievably powerful to be able to have a, a thing, uh, an almost immediate relational database that you can tag and put all kinds of things in. And if you find it, you find it. And if you don't, you don't. And uh, oh, uh, the other thing he said was that it has perfect memory, which is unbelievable and incredible, incredible, incredibly uh, insightful because it, it brings up the point that uh, you know witness testimony is really bad testimony because our memory is very imprecise and our memory is very um, colored, I guess. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, memory American, sorry. Uh, we don't say that anymore. Uh, <laughs> our memory is colored by a lot of things that go on and as time passes, it becomes even more and more foggy and hazy and more colored. Um, it just gets worse and you can you know for you would bet a million dollars that you remembered something exactly right and you'd be completely wrong and that's really weird and I don't like that so when I have experiences and uh, things like that I'll put them in the phone somehow some way uh, I've thought about a diary or a journal or that kind of thing I journal some things um, that I just kind of have to get out of my brain writing helps a lot for getting things out of your brain and for really thinking about the things because if you're writing it you're restating it and if you're restating it you're rethinking it um, and you're trying to present it in a uh, you know a, a coherent manner so things tend to make a little bit more sense if you rewrite them and even if you write it out and then you know crumple up the paper and toss it in the trash or type it out and then delete the whole thing it doesn't matter this, the, the simple act of writing is, is important to the process and it's, uh, it's good for memory anyways if, you, if it's a particular event that you would like to remember or have need to remember uh, that's a good process so yeah that's uh, the idea of augmenting your brain and improving your capacity with this, uh, this, this amazing supercomputer that everyone's playing Angry Birds on or whatever they're playing nowadays it's this very powerful, very 
amazing tool turns you know Elon Musk turns you into a cyborg and people just want to they just want to do garbage with it they just want to waste it <sighs> yeah so that's that hope that makes sense and I hope it uh, inspires you to get better use out of your I don't have glasses uh, get better use out of your phones bye it's getting too dark ah!